In this video, we shall show what do we have to do in order to see a pattern in consumer behavior. Discovering Patterns Example 1.2 Frequency Distribution of Mobile Phone Ownership A survey about mobile phone ownership was done in a subdivision with 50 households. Produce a frequency distribution to display the pattern of ownership based on the collected data below. So this is the application of STAT. Application of STAT in consumer behavior and our goal is to see a pattern in consumer behavior. You studied STAT way back in junior high school. So this is the data that we got. Looking at it, it's not too helpful. A data is not helpful in so far as seeing the pattern of consumer behavior and in so far as guiding us in our decisions to act on this uh, on this uh, information why would you want to see a pattern in consumer behavior well you can be an entrepreneur you can be engaged in buying and selling e-gadgets and so you may want to know how many gadgets how many mobile phones does each household own on average in a certain subdivision so how do you do that you you do a survey a survey does not have to be a formal survey it can be an informal survey and from the survey you extrapolate what does the survey say but of course the initial result of a survey would be a collection of data and data by themselves are not helpful you have to organize the data you have to apply some stat or math processes in order that the data will reveal a pattern and one of those helpful helpful processes to see the pattern in consumer behavior is to produce a frequency distribution table so a frequency distribution table is a tabular representation of the distribution of numerical or categorical data so this one in the first column what we have here is the number of mobile phones owned by a household okay or the number of mobile phones in one household and in the second column is the number of households that owns x mobile phones okay so how do we interpret this so now we can see some pattern here uh, we can this one is revealing some helpful information now so what uh, information do we get from this? Well, three households do not own a mobile phone. Nine households out of 50 own three. 18 households out of 50 own five. Three households out of 50 own seven. You cannot stop with frequency distribution table. You must augment it with a histogram. So a histogram is a graphical representation of the distribution of numerical or categorical data. So this one uh, gives you a, a visual idea about the pattern of uh, mobile phone ownership. And what's good about this is you see it at once right away. Not like with the tabular representation of, of information. You have to read it line by line in order that you can see the pattern of mobile phone ownership. But it's different when it's a histogram. Right away, you can see. You can see right away that, uh, that the most number of uh, mobile phones owned by a household is seven. But there were only three of them. Three, three households out of 50. But 80. 18 out of 50 households own five mobile phones. We don't have to stop with, with histogram. We can discover more patterns by finding the weighted mean or, or the group mean. On average, how many mobile phones does each household own? Okay, so we can do it. We can do it in the old way. We can work on the original data. And from there, we can get the average. How do we do that? Well, we get the sum of all these numbers. And then we divide the sum by 50. That is how you get the average. But that is, that is cumbersome. That takes time. You know, you know what? In math, if something can be done more quickly, then that is the way to do it. 
since we already obtained the frequency distribution of your uh, mobile phone ownership, we can do the weighted mean, or sometimes we call this the group mean. Group mean, okay, because the data had been grouped according to frequency. That's why you call it the group mean, but you can also call it the weighted mean. Okay, so what is the average? Average number of phones owned by each household. So how do we do that? How do you read this? The mean is equal to the summation of X sub I times F sub I. What this means is you will multiply each of these. The number of phones times the frequency of households that owns those number of phones. So in the first row, it's going to be 0 times 3. That's 0. Okay. 1 times 2. That's 2. Okay. So on and so forth. 5 times 18. That's 90. 7 times 3. That's 21. Times 3. That's 21. You're just multiplying and then you will get the sum of x sub i times f sub i. That is how we interpret this. That is how this is math language. Okay. And that is how we do it. And then we divide everything by, what is this? The summation of f sub i. This one. And we know this one to be equal to 50. And so an average, the number of phones owned by each household is 4. So what inferences can we make from this? If there are four mobile phones for each household in a certain subdivision, well, we can say that that uh, probably mobile phones now are as necessary as a toothbrush. Because on average, I think the number of uh, people in a household in, in something like a subdivision would be between four and six. Look at your own family. How many members are there in your household? And I have the feeling that it's somewhere between 4 and 6. So what inference can you make from that? Well, that means that, that each adult or near-adult person in the household owns a mobile phone. In which case, we can say that a mobile phone now is as necessary as a toothbrush because each of us owns a toothbrush.